the screen? Yeah. Okay, perfect. So, so this is a. Uh, it, it, it has some red because it's you know it's not recognizing the my uh, environment is not recognizing the uh, solidity, um, but it, it's still picking it up because it's in JavaScript, so you can kind of see uh, some of these broader things. So this is my Visual Studio uh, through application, which is the interface in which I code this specific file. Uh, it's picking it up as a JavaScript, but it's actually my Solidity code. So there's 600 lines or so lines of code to create a specific token that I'll kind of walk through here. Um, a lot of it is just, you know, like functions. Um, a lot of it is just libraries that exist elsewhere. I'm just calling them. So supply function, checking balance, transferring tokens from one uh, account to the other. Um, a lot of these things are pre-built in the sense that you can call them and the system knows that that is what those functions are. And if you give them the correct input output and parameters, it will execute it in the way that it was designed to do. Um, other libraries like SafeMath is basically making sure that uh, addition, subtractions, how to deal with decimals, uh, rounding up and down, like all of those things are um, documented. So if someone says, hey, what do you do with the reminder? What do you do with the change, right? Like that's handled within the code itself. There's this shared level of agreement between all other ERC tokens and that this is how we handle these algebraic or arithmetic operations. It's, it's math at the end of the day that's hard coded into um, the, the source code. Um, and then, I mean, feel free to chime in if you have any questions, but like this is, this is ERC20, so this is a standard way of calling things, standard way of uh, invoking functions, standard way of, um, you know, kind of going through it to make sure like you see someone else's code and if it's, you know, social, it's public, you can follow through and be like, okay, here's what, this is what they're doing. Here's where it is overcounting, undercounting, or this is good, this is good to go. Um, some of the interesting stuff um, is around the way in which we are naming things, like the name and symbol, Bitcoin and BTC or Ethereum and ETH or whatever. Um, all of those things are things we can specify. So I will create my own token today, right? And I'll give it a supply and uh, I'll give it a symbol so people could know about it. It could be on, on exchanges. People could see it going up or down. Um, and, and the, the, the tokens that people carry in their balance after I make it could also be sent to other people. Like I could send it to my friend, I could pay someone with this token if they think that this is a uh, worthy currency. Uh, likely not because I'm just coming up with it on the, on the fly. But that's what each block of the code is doing. And you know, every time you see this, um, you can kind of understand in the broader sense what each one of the actual functionality um, you know, where it's coded. So when you see the compiling of the process, you can see that, oh, okay, this is where you'd go to change this. This is where you'd go. If there's an error, you'd go to like the mint process, which is creating uh, tokens, minting and, and burning, which is destroying tokens. Um, so, so, so that's what the code's doing. I won't go into it line by line, probably because it's not um, too helpful to know. Mm -hmm. um, but everything from creation to naming to supply to demand to pricing and transaction uh, is done in the 600 or so lines. Mm -hmm. um, and it's standardized because it's like it's right. the ERC20, like the libraries are already out there. So you like, you know exactly like where to pull from. And... Exactly. Exactly. So what, what you'll see here now is the, uh, the, the naming stuff for the CRC20. So everything else is standardized, as you said, but here's where and I can actually give them a name. So I'm gonna call it Sunny, and I will, the symbol will just be, let's call it SA, so I'm gonna say. And it will say, it will start off with um, three, million, uh, 3 billion uh, quantities of the Sunny token. Um, that's the max, that's the market cap, right? That's the, how much of the token can exist in, in the world. Uh, and this is our variable, right? I could have called it, you know, something else. Um, I could have given a different symbol. I could have given it a different um, quantity. All of these things are variables that each token 
creator or the ecosystem of token creators would have to come together on. Um, so what you need to do is, since this is an ID, this is where I just write the code, you actually need to go into this remix.ethereum.org, which is what helps you compile it, right? So that's sort of important because, um, you know, you need to have a place for this to uh, exist, right? So if I... Workspace, so if I go to contracts, and this is a dot sol now, so the, the red lines are gone. So I just download, I just basically put in the uh, new contract that I created for Sunny Coin or Sunny Token. Same things here again, but I've moved it from a Visual Studio Code to uh, remix.ethereum.org, and then. Um, that's all I need. I need to specify the code. It is in .sol, and uh, I need to, uh, you know, like I need to figure out how I can then compile it. So I go to this 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 is Visual icon. Studio like a free. Um, yeah, download. Visual Studio is free. Free mm -hmm. to download. This is also free, and it's on the browser, so it's you know you connect to the internet. So both are both of them are free. And after you put in the code for erc20.sol, which is my file, I actually go over here. I think it's 7.6 commit, because that's a compiler like I, this is compatible with for now. Um, 7.6, um, and then the optimization, enable optimization of 200. Not, not necessary, but it just, you know, um, good practice. Um, and then you're ready to compile it. Now, you're ready to compile this file, as you know, it says compile in the name of the file I just created. And, but it says no con no contract compiled yet because it hit this button. So that's that's all you would need to do to to create this dot .sol compiler to create token through an ERC-20 smart contract. Mm -hmm. It's as simple as that. Uh, and I'll, I'll kind of tell you like why uh, and how that, that might, uh, how that might work. Um, so after you hit, hit compile, you go to this other um, uh, symbol, which looks like the Ethereum, uh, Ethereum logo. And um, I can't move this. Oh, I can. Okay. Um, and then so after you hit the compiler, you would have to... <coughs> So you go to token code uh, because you know it's it's that that is what we need to create the tokenization, and then creation of token is pending. So you go to token code over here, and then there's different functions. So these are all the functions from our ERC twenty um, code base. And then if you want to go and see the total supply, you'll see that the one we initialized for Sunny token at line 638 is 3 billion and then 10 to the 18th power. So you'll see that that is what we have here. We have 3 billion and then we have 18 zeros after that. And that is just a naming convention you have to do. It doesn't mean that it's that many zeros. This is the actual number, but this is the format that you specify the total Sunny quantity in right so that's so that's that's basically it it's now that you've deployed the contract through these two um, functions you can now see that the balance for this address if you copy this address and you can see the balance of function that's that's the balance so all of the balance I hold in my you know address right now so I Probably, you know, it's, it's not valuable at all because no one knows what this means, but like I hold 100% of the supply for this Sunny token. Mm -hmm. But it could be valuable if somebody decided, exactly. hey, I want some Sunny exactly. coins. And I was so if I said these, these, each of them 
uh, hundred of these tokens are needed to log into this awesome site. Mm-hmm. And after all the logins are done, you just can't enter. And whatever that site is, if it's really you know cool and people are, people want it, it could appreciate in value. And if all the people buy it, and then people want it, but there's no no more supply, they're gonna pay 10x to the initial buyers at which point the price would go up. Mm-hmm. If the site starts becoming not cool, people start selling it. They're like, I really need it, and it, you know, depreciation in value. So it, it becomes a currency at that point, mm-hmm. right? Um, and, and that's kind of you know what uh, what that is. So you can check the symbol, which is SAS, which we changed. The name is Sunny. You know, so you can kind of see the parameters of this coin, and you can also like um, do transfers and stuff like that, right? So let's say this is my account, and I want to transfer it to this account. So I copy it, go back to my account, and I say, okay, well, um, you know, I want to transfer to this person. I want to transfer 100 of them, and then I transact. And it's a green check, which means that now my supply that I have 100% of, I gave this other individual or entity, I don't know who it is, because that's one of the good things about, um, you know, the blockchain where good, I guess good and bad, but like you, you can't really tell who, who is doing what. And, you know, sometimes that privacy is great. So if I want to check the balance of this new account, um, it will tell me that they have 100 now. So... If I go and check mine, I'll say I'll see that there's 100 less, uh, three billion minus you know 100. So I was able to transfer this um, successfully. So now it's a two nine 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 all the way to less you know uh, 100. Um, so that that just shows you that now not only have I created a token, but if there is demand for something like this, now I have the ability to transact and send it to other people, um, or I can you know. Now that the value is so high, they're looking at it on an exchange. Like, oh my gosh, each token is worth a thousand bucks. You know, I can send someone a token in exchange for a thousand real dollars. And for stuff like that, you have you know Uniswap, which is a, a protocol where you can um, uh, transact between crypto. So let's say you know this one and mine, which isn't on here, but you know if I were to look at an exchange, you could actually get the SAS token, which is my token. And it'll tell you what, you know, um, so I have to connect the Ethereum. Um, so I have to log in. But, like, you know, you can imagine the SAS token and, you know, a different token kind of being able to transact between each other now. So someone would exchange me a Bitcoin or someone would an Ether for my Sunny token, right? And so what, what you, so to your earlier point about being a software developer and learning Solidity versus not, even after you create your token, you still have to like um, call other non-blockchain functions like payment processing. Like let's say someone said, "Hey, you know what? I don't have um, ether. I want to pay with real dollars." Mm-hmm. So at that point, you would have to like figure out um, through APIs and other exchanges how people could take a dollar, convert it to ether, then convert it to SAS coin or Sunny token, mm-hmm. right? So for that, you wouldn't just need um, blockchain understanding, you might need understanding of REST APIs in general, which is a, you could do it Ruby, PHP, uh, Go, like JavaScript. Um, so the creation of it is Solidity, but the ecosystem where it lives requires understanding of, of other things. And I'll give you like one last example, stable coins. Those are coins that are not as, um, as, uh, data, but not as like, uh, uh, you know, as a funny coin. Mm-hmm. Those are things that are tied to like a physical asset or other securities like the US dollar or the price of gold or something like that. So you'd have to call an API that's always reading like a foreign exchange somewhere that's always reading the up and down of the currency of the US dollar. And based on that, the price of your token will fluctuate, which is good and bad. Which is good because now it's more stable. It's backed by something. Mm-hmm. That's what stable coin. But it's bad because if the market crashes or some of the traditional things happen, then you are exposed to that type of volatility and risk, which was one of the things that you wanted to explore uh, blockchain technologies and distributed technologies on because they're uncorrelated with the 
growing markets. And that's a choice you can make. Like Sunny Coin could be a stable coin if you like, if you wanted to yeah. just like put those APIs in there. And that's like exactly. a so market sell actually... for your coin and be like, hey, my coin, this isn't just a pump and dump. Like this exactly. is not just right. tied to this artist, it's tied to something that's like physical that you can touch, like the the right. value of oil or whatever. Exactly. So the, the burn so the burn and mint um you know, kind of functionalities that you saw, you know, main thing is supply effectively mm-hmm. and burn uh, is demand in, 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 in a sense, right? So in stable coin, like those would be parameters that are more closely uh, constrained, meaning you can't just like, you know, mint and burn the US dollar, you're not the treasury or, you know, you can't set monetary policy. But in this instance, like what I just showed you for the 3 billion sunny coins, you could, right? You could, I could have, Put this at one trillion supply, and you know, so so in stable coin you have more parameters to work with. At which point you're reading an external API to set price, but in this token that I just created, it, the price is actually left up to the market. Whatever people are willing to, whatever the demand goes up, people will see that price um, signal on volatility on um, you know exchanges where you could swap one token for another. This is how pretty much any coin is made, give or take. Give or take, yes. Mm-hmm. So for ERC twenty, most coins are made this way. Um, there's other protocols out there um, that follow the same logic. Obviously, the order and functionality and the syntax might differ, but the overall logic is the same. And I know this is, yeah, gotta wrap up. But this is like, cause we, I brought it up a bit, but as somebody who can see how quickly and in some cases easily a coin can be made. Does that make you more skeptical on, I guess, a given crypto token or less skeptical? Um, I mean, I think if I know, like, so if I'm a special, let's say if I'm an art specialist, like Mm -hmm. I would more likely be able to, so if I'm an art specialist and I know how to read JavaScript, I might go through the smart contract for a particular digital asset or a tokenization process and have more conviction like hey they did everything right this does represent like original art so i'm more hopeful but i think the the what makes me a little skeptical is you know people who know art or music let's say if they're not equally um aware of what's underneath this token or this digital asset they're more likely to be misled and they don't know what to believe right like, so if they see market cues something's picking up, it could be a pump and dump, they don't know, but they see this one token doing really good, and you know, they wanna get it now because it's going higher. So there's some danger there, but I'm still hopeful that as more and more people learn these actual tools, they can actually weed out potentially dangerous, um, sort of, you know, not authentic uh, tokens from the ones that are actually built on sound logic, sound process, sound, Unit economics of demand supply, maintaining burning protocols. Um, so, so I'm mostly hopeful, uh, but I think that, like I was saying before, I think there's a little bit more that we need to educate um, both retail, you know, like the mass market, mainstream market, uh, and even developers who know everything other than the uh, true logic behind blockchain. But in a matter of years, I think it'll get more stable. Uh, we will weed out all the uh, underperforming. Uh, tokens and, and, and digital assets and really find that use case and hit the critical mass that really gets us to the promised you know, blockchain utopia, if that exists.